All right, let's uh, showcase some Wizard of Legend. So this is like a roguelike spell slinger game, is how I've heard it described. Um, the way that it kind of works is we have um, different abilities. We have a basic attack, we have a dash, which lets us move quickly. And we have two other attacks that we get to choose. Um, there are a ton of different spells. I haven't unlocked nearly all of them, but these are all kinds of different spells that I can pick from. And they're different like schools of magic, you know, like fire, ice, lightning. I've mostly been playing with air. And then one of our spells is also considered our signature spell, which means that there's this bar that charges up, which is up here. And when it's charged, like so, we get to unleash like a really badass version of it. Otherwise, our spells you know, look like this. This is our basic attack. Uh, this is one that I like. It's like a cyclone that pulls people in. And then this one's like a hurricane that is kind of defensive. And you can sort of chain these and combo them together. And I like them all because they're all 360 degrees. So I don't have to worry too much about my aim. Uh, other things that we have, we have, we get to pick a relic at the start. This increases air damage, but there's all kinds of different relics that we can acquire and choose from. And this is before the game starts. So like basically what we do is we enter a dungeon, we go until we die. And that's that. And in the dungeon, we're going to get a currency that's gold. There'll be shops in there. We can buy additional abilities to fill out these other slots or we can acquire additional artifacts as we're in the dungeon. But for starting out, this is what we get. We get these four spell slots, we get the one artifact to choose from, and we get to pick a wizard robe, which isn't super important right now. I'm not gonna go into detail on that. Outside of the dungeon, we have this purple currency, which we can use to acquire spells that we might not have to start with, or relics that we might not have, as well as a few other things. But that's basically how the game you know, you don't just lose everything because you acquire these purple coins in the dungeon, which you can spend outside of it. But let's go ahead and uh, get into the dungeon and show what the game looks like. So my basic build idea is I do a lot of area of effect. I can control enemy positioning somewhat. I don't do the most damage in the world, but that's okay. I'm very fast, very survivable, and I like this style of build. And everything but our basic attack has a cooldown associated with it. Which can be a little bit annoying starting out, not having access to all of your spells all the time. So there we go, we just found another spell from that chest, Blazing Blitz. And that's what it does. It's like a little dash forward. Actually that was pretty cool. special attack from having it charged up by hitting people. At the end of each dungeon level, there is a mini-boss that we fight. I find most of them to be pretty easy. And then every couple of levels, there's like a regular boss. There's only three bosses, and they occur in different orders, and you know, the later in the game that you fight a boss, the stronger it is. So, also I totally fell down there, but so did they, so. I've actually taken a lot of damage this run, probably because I'm talking. Usually I won't take hardly any damage in the first little bit, but that's okay. There are ways to heal. They're pretty few and far between, and a lot of times they cost gold. Right now we got 107. I think it's like 100 gold to heal for 200, 250, so. Which is less than ideal because we want to be able to buy more relics and more get better powers and stuff that sy synergize with what we're using right now. So, holy shit, that was terrifying. Oof. I gotta say, this is really mean for a first level, too. Usually they're not this bad. There's some pretty powerful enemies in here. Jesus Christ, these guys, too. Let that fire shield wear off so I can chuck one of them into the lava. There we go. Actually, it looks like he dropped a healing thing. There we go. Those are pretty rare drops. 
The nice thing about that hurricane spell that I have is that it also does appear to like have defensive use. I think it blocks projectiles. So all around pretty nice. And I want to avoid these barrels because they blow up when they're hit and I don't really have much in the way of ranged attacks. Actually, I don't really have any ranged attacks. So this is where we'd face the boss. Uh, but we haven't explored all this level yet. We've only found one shop. There's always three shops. They have different portals. They all take us to the boss once we've been to the boss room. So it makes for a little bit of fast travel there, which is convenient. Jesus Christ, this is... I can't believe this is the very first attack. These guys are crazy powerful. Yeah, that's a nasty room too. There's a lot of stuff that came out there. That's really uncommon. At least in my experience. I don't recall ever encountering too much of that powerful shit early on. Let's see, where have we missed? And we also have the option to just go ahead and do the boss if we really wanted to, but... It's usually a good idea to explore, find the other shops, see if any cool loot drops. Alright, so this guy sells cursed items. They have some benefit and some downside, and I usually don't mess with too many of them. Anyway, I don't know where the other shop is, so screw it, let's just do the mini boss. See what that's all about. Basically, the way that mini bosses are going to work is they're going to do attacks. And while they're doing their attacks, they have that outline. But once that outline goes away, if we do some damage to them, they will get stunned for a little bit, which gives us opportunity to do a lot of damage. And like I said, I find most of these guys to pretty much be pushovers. So we clear the stage, we get a chest, we get a lot of those purple coins I was talking about, which we can spend outside of the dungeon, which is cool. And I would like to heal up at the shop, but since I'm just doing a video, I'll go ahead. Normally I would probably go and find the shop, buy a healing potion, buy an item. And you can see the three bosses on that screen. The f there's like a fire lady, an earth guy, and an ice lady. In this case, the fire lady happens to be first, which is fine by me because she's really fast and scary. So I'd rather face her early when she's relatively weaker. that we didn't kill him yet. And the archer guys, you know, we can see where they're going to shoot, which is nice and convenient. This is an enhanced version of my whirlwind spell. You can see it will move and spin even faster, dealing more damage. Let's go ahead and pick that up for 100 gold. Now, let's see, we could round out with a final spell. I'll do that, we'll get this creeping tendrils. Because I, I remember this spell, it's really good. What's that? A relic drop? Pocket watch? Reduces cooldowns, but also lowers the rate at which our ultimate thingy charges, which is fine. The ultimate thingy isn't really that big of a deal in my experience. I prefer to just have access to my spells most of the time. So I keep accidentally hitting the wrong button. I mean to use the frost tendrils. I keep pressing B for that. Because I did a run a while ago where that was bound to be. That's one thing that I've encountered. It's just hotkey issues. And that's my fault though. Just from uh, lack of experience. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we actually didn't make it to a boss there, which is a little bit surprising, but you know, talking. And we're just back here. And we have all that currency. So we can go look and see what we might be able to get. Breaking Twister. I haven't used this ability yet. Let's take a look at it.
Unleash a slow moving burst of air that slows and damages all nearby enemies. Okay, that's kind of cool. That does replace my thing that makes me dash around and clump them all up though. Okay. We can always, there's all kinds of different builds we can try. And we can try to combo all kinds of different stuff. In fact, so instead of doing all that AoE stuff, I can try to do where most of my stuff is in a line. And we can see how that goes. I probably won't last too long because I'm not really acquainted with these spells, but we'll see. So in this case, the Fire Lady is first again. Those, those get randomized up, but that's fine. Oof. Oof. Taking so much damage. Crazy. Let's see. Yeah, this guy will... Imp so the robe that I have confers some benefits. That guy will make it confer a little bit more of the benefits that it already gives. But that's kind of... This, this place I like that, actually, I can get used to this. Spear guys are a little bit annoying. Okay, that was pretty cool for the ultimate thingy. Breaking Twister. I don't know if I've used that yet. There's so many different abilities, they all kind of blend together in my head after a while. Well, this build is certainly... I feel like it does more upfront damage than my last one. But I feel like I'm lacking some of the control and mobility that I had. Oh, that's pretty nice. took more damage than I liked. Most of the time now, I'm experienced enough with it, you know, I can get through these first two acts without taking hardly any hits. But it's very important not to take too much damage. Now in the co-op mode, which I play a little bit of, you know, if one of the players dies, they can resurrect and stuff. It's a lot more forgiving.
<laughs> Let's try the Vampire's Fangs. It's a cursed item. Defeating enemies regenerates health, but max health is reduced. Oof, 300 instead of 500. That's a huge reduction. Hopefully the health regen is good. If it's just like one or two, then it's absolutely not worth it. At least not for playing at my level. take any damage so we didn't get to see how much it healed. Oh my god, that's so many exploding things. Let's just go ahead and set off that chain reaction. Jesus. Still not taking any damage, huh? Gonna push that guy into the lava. Okay, I took a little bit of damage there. 252 health. Okay, he only for 3. I know I said 2 earlier, but 3 is actually tremendously better than 2. So. Normally, I, you can like basically stun lock those guys, but if you don't press the button fast enough, then well, then that's it. I don't think I want any of those artifacts. Shit, you kind of get the hang for what artifacts do after a while, and some of them boost certain types of elemental damage and whatnot. And I, maybe the hourglass would have been worth it. I think that reduces cooldowns. But. What does Thunder Drop do? Enhanced. Can't afford it. Lightning seems really potent. I've only played around with it a little bit, but it seems like, at least from what I played with and my limited experience, it seemed probably like the most powerful of the elements. Just because it could shock enemies like into place, it was pretty ridiculous. Yeah, that health recovery actually is absolutely nuts. That's so good. Like, we've probably already recovered like 30 or 40 health. Tremendous. These multi-archer fights can get out of here. on me than I should. I thought the maybe the water doesn't interrupt attacks as well as the air thing I was using. Because the air thing would have reliably interrupted pretty much everything there. Either way, let's do this mini boss, see if we can get to one of the actual act bosses. So that we can show it off. Although I don't like our odds tremendously, this is the hardest of the mini bosses in my experience. It's crazy because we've gotten like twice in a row now. the other mini bosses can get like that. It's absolutely nuts. Adds a chance to slow foes, okay. Get a little tiny heal before the boss, just a little one, of course. She's gonna talk some shit. 
basically with these act bosses, they're going to do a chain of attacks, and then they're going to have like a brief period where they're vulnerable to a stun. And for the first one, it's always three attacks, but then I think it becomes four, then five attacks in the, act, the second and third ones, respectively. chest which has lots of heals and usually an ability ignition drive ah that's pretty cool now we're in the I guess what I would call the second act and the enemies get tougher the fights get tougher very easy to die if you didn't really get much in the way of like good stuff starting out which I think is the case for me I don't feel very strong at least not relative to some of my other ones. Oh shit. I really don't favor the uh, enclosed spaces fights. I like to be able to move around and dodge. I'll probably die here pretty soon though. Like I said, I don't think I have a very strong build. I think my original win build is better than this. with that wind build by the time I hit act 2 I've added enough pieces to the puzzle to where my initial salvo Ooh. enhanced regular attack sure to where that initial salvo will just completely decimate everything and it's only the more protracted fights that actually give me any sort of issue Now on the mini bosses, it's always their uh, little helpers that give me the most trouble. Once I get the helpers down, the mini bosses don't feel that bad. But yeah. So yeah, that's this game and me playing pretty unimpressively there. But yeah, the furthest I've made it is to the third boss so far, but I've only been playing it today. I imagine I'll probably beat it in the next couple of days and see what sorts of things are unlocked at the end, like additional difficulties and stuff. Let's see, have I tried this one? Okay, yeah, I have. Let's see. Yeah, it's oh well. At any rate, that is good enough for me.